Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello. We're continuing our series of shows on the study of the Ten Sefirot. And, uh, and this is our third lesson. On our previous lesson, we talked about the restriction meaning when the created being or malchut feels itself opposite to the creator, feels shame, and therefore restricts itself, stops receiving the light. And so we'll continue reading now. Uh, those that are watching us maybe for the first time, just to remind that the study of the Ten Sefirot is based on the Tree of Life of the great Kabbalist from the 16th century, the Ari. And we'll also talk about how the book is, how, how is it built. The Ari says the space that remained after the restriction was circular. And then he explains that I'd like to immediately ask, what does it mean that after the restriction, the space remained circular. Well, he explains it. That circular means that it is not in the shape of a triangle or something, some other asymmetric object, but precisely an object in which there are no unique special qualities of one opposite the other against the other, and therefore it has the form of a circle, meaning it says that, meaning this is a process that happened in the complete equality, in a complete equality between all of its parts. Can we somehow depict it or what does it tell us, this principle? How can I implement it in my life? That the restriction, it happened on all parameters. And there was no one parameter that was bigger or smaller or unique or not in relation to others. But all the desires, all the qualities, they were completely equal. And thus the restriction had the form of a circle. Okay, then Bala Sulam, maybe I'll explain it a bit cl more clearly. Uh, one of the commentaries is Opnimi, and the other is in a reflection. And he says, in Opnimi, he explains that the main reason for the restriction was the desire for the new form of reception in order to bestow that is destined to appear by the creation of the worlds. However, it was not only by reason of thickness, etc., etc. Why, why restriction? There was a restriction be, because... It is the, the space of the desire felt itself opposite to the Creator and therefore restricted itself. Restricted itself from receiving fulfillment from the Creator, restricted itself from being in some kind of relative, incomplete form in relation to the Creator, and therefore just like the light of the Creator that fulfilled it, so did the restriction, was the restriction itself in the form of a circle. So if I understand correctly, the restriction happened because the created, cr the created being felt itself opposite to the Creator in intention and not because there's the desire to receive an oviut, as he says. Right. Meaning, the shame isn't because I'm the opposite of the Creator because he's the desire to bestow and I'm the desire to receive, but how do I use the desire? Obviously, because the created being can't determine what is it, how is it, but it can choose its reaction to how it is. And therefore, its reaction was that I wish to be similar and as close as possible to the Creator. So if I understand correctly, it is possible to implement it in our life too. Meaning, I don't need to be ashamed that this is how the Creator created me. Obviously, I'm the desire to receive. 
I want to use everyone, etc., etc. It's not, this isn't the problem. Right. But it's how do I use my desire to receive. Right. That is, it, which is at your disposal. That is a matter of your own choice. So that I'll always want to receive pleasure that's clear. That's not a flaw. So the problem isn't to receive pleasure, but that I want to receive pleasure and joy at the expense of others. Yes, this is your choice. Okay. So now, in general, we're talking about the reality that occurred before the Big Bang. Meaning, oh, these are found, we're talking about the essence of creation itself. Okay, the foundation of our nature. Then he writes that because the light of Ensof was even, the restriction too was even. This is the meaning of the circle. Right, circle is the ideal equal form, and therefore when the light has created creation and fulfilled it, or the created being, and the created being felt itself opposite to the light, its restriction was in the form of a circle. He even explains that it was equal on all sides and it can't restrict itself on one side more than on the other, meaning the restriction was in all phases, not only in the last one in all phases and in all directions, since this is how the nature, this was the nature of the light that fulfilled it. So the restriction is a law of creation that says that if man receives the light for himself, he can't receive it, it's impossible. Right. Then, we're moving on to well, we have this book translated into Russian, a part of it is translated, also a part of it is translated into English, and so we're moving on to chapter 2. He explains how the light of Ensof extended a line to the worlds that were emanated and created in the place of the space that was restricted. So what started? here. Suddenly after the restriction appears some kind of line through which all created beings receive some kind of light from the light of Ensof that fulfilled creation before the restriction. Now, to that created being that was restricted from its previous to its following state it is drawn a line of light, or a ray of light, and that ray of light contains in itself all parameters, all kinds of influences in order to completely fulfill and correct the desire. And that light, it comes from the Creator to the created being and starts fulfilling him. So this fulfillment, it uh, follows the desire of the created being or it all happens unconsciously. How does it work? No, not that it happens according to the desire of the created being because there's, there was not yet a phase of desire that would exist before the light, that would precede it. But the light gradually, by entering into the desire, it starts changing the desire. And it changes it up to a point where the desire passes through these four phases of its development, and after which it feels the reception of the light as absolute, full, and fulfilling, that fulfills it, and starts feeling the light inside itself as <coughs> what causes an opposite quality to awaken in it. Awakening a completely opposite quality in it, which, in its play, in its turn, 
force is the desire to restrict itself to. So after the restriction, all created beings received through that line. But before that, before that, they received it in the form of a circle, completely unbounded. So these are two different sorts, kinds of connection with the upper force, and they continue this way. What's the difference? The difference is that receiving in the form of a circle is an unbounded, unlimited reception that is independent or doesn't depend on the qualities of the created being. And it is it completely receives in an unrestricted form from the Creator, whereas through the line, it is restricted by the qualities of the line, by the equivalence of form between the desires of the created being and the line that comes from the Creator. Suppose like a pipeline, a conduit, and the light travels through that uh, pipeline and fulfills the created being. So we can't say that this is conscious and this is unconscious reception. In the meantime, both states are yeah, yeah, and they're determined by the qualities. Um, by these qualities. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this because there's a lot, a lot written about it. Ben Balasulam writes that do not be mistaken, do not mislead into the thought that the restriction of the light from the middle point caused any change in it and so there's no change in absence in spirituality. What does it mean that there's no absence? Meaning that no following form of reception, any kind of reaction action, any whatever that is of the reception of the light of the Creator influences the previous forms. The light extends from the Creator and in a completely free way fulfills the created being and the created being responds to it, changing accordingly according to the difference between its qualities and the qualities of the Creator, meaning the Creator's light. Then he says that the light in and of itself in a state of complete rest and all the changes are in the created being. So what does it mean that the light is in complete rest? The light is in complete rest, meaning that it does not change its qualities, intention, performing any kind kind of action, and these actions can be very different. But it does not change itself in that, meaning its quality is the absolute fulfillment, mitigation of creation. And therefore, maybe it can perform different actions, but its intention is one. His intention is one, only to fulfill the, uh, only to fulfill creation with the very best. So absolute rest means that the intentions did not change in relation to... Okay, how can we understand this, implement this principle in our life, practically? In our life, there is something like that too. Suppose parents... They can. Um, they can rebuke their kids or hug them, but in whatever attitude they have toward their children, what guides them is, in whatever relation, is their desire to give complete good, utter good to their children. Okay, in relation to the Creator, I heard that He is the good that does good, and He doesn't change His attitude towards me, but I have to believe in it because I don't feel it. So what does this principle give me? This principle gives you the ability to appreciate, evaluate the Creator's attitude towards you. Do I need to believe in it or can I feel it? That That's how it is. You can't feel it now. You can only believe in it. 
But if you will aspire to such actions toward the Creator, then you will start feeling Him. So Kabbalah says that it is possible to feel that the Creator really wishes only good. Yeah, that's called the law of equivalence of form. Meaning only by acquiring His qualities can I feel that. Right, to the extent of that you can feel His attitude towards you. Because I see that many people, they enjoy believing in it. Really, most people in the world believe that the Creator is the good that does good. And it could be a very true uh, faith. It doesn't matter. It completely satisfies a person. Very possibly so. But on the other hand, we don't simply want to see it. We want to feel it. And um, inquire it, acknowledge it, get to know it. Then Bala Sulam writes that you should know that all the innovations and the cascading of degrees regard only impact on the vessel and its reception from the upper light, for only that is subject to change. He wants to say that there is no change in the upper light and all the changes happen in the created being himself and the desire. And if the created being changes accordingly, then he feels it as the upper light, meaning the creator's attitude, he feels it as changing, meaning the light is in complete rest and something changes in our desires and it seems to us that the light changes. Yeah. And then he says, that you should not forget that well, he writes about coarseness and um, uh, that we, and he, he says that we shouldn't see this as geometric forms, etc., etc., then the Ari writes that all the worlds are in the place of that space that has been restricted. What is that? The thing is that the light coming from the Creator to the created being that fulfills creation, meaning the desire that the Creator has created, the desire to receive pleasure, the desire to be fulfilled, this light fulfills and satiates, delights that desire. The desire is filled with light, feels it, feels its oppositeness, and feeling the oppositeness of the light, meaning how opposite the Creator is to creation, then the the created being restricts its desire to receive, and in that practically occurs the division between the Creator and the created beings. Well, it's somehow similar to what scientists say, that everything's in the middle point, the restriction, everything. Well, Kabbalists write that the light that extends from the Creator is the upper force that created the desire, and that desire was filled with light, felt in itself the measure in which it is the opposite of the quality of the light and restricted itself down to a point. This is the state of the first restriction. <clears throat> this is actually similar to how our universe developed that. It says that there was just one small point and then there was an explosion. Well, here we'll see what degrees of development exist here. Okay, and then he says that in that point that was restricted, in which there's the light now, he says that there are four worlds. He explains that Olam world comes from the word Ha'alama, concealment, that there are four filters 
What were these four filters needed for? Well, it's not that they're necessary. No one creates anything on purpose, but since there is an oppositeness between the qualities of the Creator to fulfill and the quality of the created being to be fulfilled, then in the a- interaction between them, they form four phases of mutual influence of the one over the other. And therefore, from the light itself, from phase zero, comes phase one, where the light expands in the desire, the desire starts feeling it, changes, so much so that it restricts itself and afterwards nonetheless receives all of this light into itself. This condition is called the world of endlessness of Ensof. It is very elaborately explained because this is the most basic evidence altogether in the wisdom of Kabbalah. The four phases, it's called the four phases of direct light. And it is the connection of two qualities, of the quality of bestowal of the Creator and the quality of reception of the created being and the different combinations between them give these four variants of, let's call it, concealment. Yeah. Yeah. Later on, we start revealing. We start revealing them in us, we start developing in accordance with these phases, etc. After he explained all this, he goes back the Ari to saying that prior to the restriction, he and his name were one, and no reason can attain him. Yeah, that the desire is created by a light, which is its opposite, it's fulfilled by the light, and this state we actually can't understand in any way. It's called the world of endlessness. Meaning he and his name. Yeah, he is the light and his name is that state of desire. And they were one. There was no difference between them. Right. And why is it necessary to say that uh, it is impossible to attain it with our mind? Because there are other ways, because there's no other way to, there are other options of measuring it, feeling it, not in our mind. Our mind is merely a very restricted tool because it is desire. And we need to rise to such a state where we will be higher than our desire, where we will have the intention along with the desire and with the help of this intention, we can change the desire for it to be in accordance with the light. And then in the... Then when the desire and the light reach equivalence of form between them, only then can we measure, see, and feel their equivalence. So the mind is a result of the desire. If the mind, if the desire is egoistic, then the mind serves that desire. And you're saying that there's another possibility, which is to rise above the desire, and there you have a different mind, a new mind called faith above reason, a quality which we acquire. It is a quality of reception, of bestowal that we acquire, and in that quality of bestowal, we can sense the quality of the Creator rising above ourselves. Toward the end, he already writes that since there, in and so he and his name are one, then there's no difference there. He says that the mind of the created being cannot attain it, for he has no place, no boundary. It means that we need to change our desire for it to be 
like the Creator, but how can we do it if we're created beings? Therefore, the influence of the light over our desire gives our desire an intention. And if this intention of ours equalizes with the intention of the Creator, we come closer to the Creator, we near Him and can feel Him to that measure, be in contact with Him, be fulfilled by Him to the measure of our intention. Meaning the main thing is not the desire. The desire remains the desire to receive pleasure. This is the initial desire of the created being himself. But for what? To receive pleasure for my own sake or for the sake of the Creator, there are these two options here. Here we can change our intention of what are we receiving pleasure for, and if we can change our intention from receiving pleasure to ourselves for ourselves to receiving pleasure for the Creator, then in that we can become like the Creator, that just like the Creator wants to delight us, we wish to delight Him, and to that extent we start feeling Him. Man born in our world, he does He's not simply born with a desire to receive. He already has an intention, right? Yeah, but it's very little micro-intentions. Like we see a kid, a little child. He merely has the desire um, to receive for himself pleasure. But then at a certain age, he has this... um, We see that he does it for himself. He uses others consciously. Yeah, yeah, true, true. So we have a desire. We have a reason. We have We have the desire. We have we have mind, reason, desire, and intention. The main thing is the intention. This is what defines the person. What is he aspiring for in his actions? And how is the intention related to the mind? With the help of the mind, we can change our intention. So not with the help of the desire, but the mind. No, no, the desire in, itself, in and of itself, no. We can say that it's uh, surely mechanical, but the way in which we can elevate our intentions above the desire and to change the character of the desire itself for oneself or for the sake of others, this is already in man's ability to do. So his intention is a very serious function, meaning that we can change the intention by it. Yeah. So uh, this is the second chapter of part one, and afterwards we are going, we're approaching inner reflection. It is something that we'll get deeper into. It's a broader explanation given by Bala Sulam to the entire process process of the creation of the foundations of our desire. Thank you very much. Till next time, all the best.